To be honest, we could probably spend a whole series just looking at weathering, and who knows, on the Railway Channel one day that might happen. But my hope here is really to inspire you to have a go at some of these slightly more um, advanced or different techniques on your garden railway, just to try, try and take things that little bit further. Now, Andy, it's not really rocket science, is it? I mean, we've got the tools of your trade here, so perhaps you can talk us through them. Yeah, certainly. First thing I'd say is I, I'm not one of those that goes in for spray technique. Um, I haven't got facility to start with. You'd need really a, a spray booth and, and the equipment compressor and that, which I haven't got. But I found that um, using the techniques in the books and that and the, and the other publications that you can do quite a nice job just using brushes. Um, I've got for a start, I've got a, I've got a range there of Humbra or paints. Now to start with, although there's a large number there, you don't need many. Um, steer away from pure black, pure white, go for a mixture of light grey, dark grey, uh, and by using those and by mixing those you've got enough to do most of the, of the, of the tasks you want to. I've got Humbra thinner there which is going to be quite useful, which we're going to use quite a lot. And then brushes. Um, you can get different types of brushes. The main one that I use is one of these square ended brushes. Um, this one's about, what, five millimetres wide? Um, it's a fairly soft bristle, but don't go for an expensive one because you're going to be mistreating this. You're going to do the worst possible things you can think of to this paintbrush and it's not going to last very long. So go for the cheaper end of the market um, because they're not, you're not going to get an awful lot of life out of it. Now the other tools and that, well, for example, this one here, um, I, think it's a, I think it's a dentist tool. I thought I recognised it. Yeah, it, it's sort of thing that sort of strikes fear into you when you attend the dentist. But you can buy these very easily now at model exhibitions, even in model shops. And we're going to use that as a, a sort of an abrasive tool. There's a, there's a, there's a variety of them at different shapes. Um, once again, if you're starting out, you could use just a basic screwdriver. But like all these things, over time, if you pick up other, uh, the better tools, you'll find that the effect at the end of the day is better. Now, one of the things I've got my eye on is these rather handy little pallets. It's something I'm always scratching around for. But, you know, what are these? Well, you're going to like this because um, in order to obtain these, you have to go for the sort of Cornetto type ice cream. Because if you look at them, some of them have cardboard ends, avoid those, but you'll find a lot of them have these plastic ends. And they're very nice. So you, you, both, you both enjoy the, the ice cream and you've also then got some, some modelling tools that you can use to mix your paints in. So you could say it satisfies the palette in more way than one. You could in, by all means. <laughs> now, the, not, the range of paints you've got here is actually quite small. There's obviously lots of tins, but the, the colour range is quite small. I remember reading somewhere recently saying this is perhaps one of those slightly counterintuitive things that you think looking at nature, there's a whole wide range of colours. But in fact, you probably need fewer than you might think. Yeah, I think that's true. If, if you think about it, if, if you've got a dark wagon, let's say you, you've got a, a, a wagon that's painted black. Now, as time goes by, that's going to fade, isn't it? And it's going to move towards a grey through various shades. On the other hand, if you've got a wagon like, like this one, which is a, a red sort of colour, what's going to happen there is it gets dirty, it's going to gravitate through greys again. In a way, the, the two, you could think, in the end, would, would meet in the middle. But what we're seeking to do here, we've got some basic paints of various shades that we can mix in the palettes to give us that range of colours. But one thing I do notice is that they all kind of tone nicely together. Yeah, I've got some there that are rust coloured. The basic colour that I use on my wagons is Humbra number 70. Um, so obviously that's one I start with. Now, as I say, that's the one I use, but you could use any, any colour to suit yourself. Um, other colours I use uh, for coating stock is green, um, so obviously you'd start with that. But other than that, what I tend to do is, if I'm in a modelling shop, I'll pick up a couple of tins of grey, um, or if they have a sale on it, I'll buy a couple, and over time you just tend to, to widen the range. Now, do you use the same range of colours across the, the whole of the wagon? I mean, if you look at some of the photos, for instance, you might find, right. am I right, that the, the, the rolling gear, the underframes and everything are actually slightly different from the, the bodywork? Yeah, because if you think about it, what is, what is weathering the, the plank, um, the, the timber work, on the top of the wagon is going to be such things as, as the sun, as the rain. It's also going to be, say, soot from the locomotive, which will land on the top of the wagon. Conversely, at the bottom, you're going to get rust off the rail. You're going to get ballast dust. So you're going to have different colours, um, particularly on a, on a van. If you're looking at an open wagon, which is quite low, um, you're not going to get so much from the, 
the soot and that. The other th thing is the interior of the wagon is going to have a totally different uh, experience, shall we say, to the exterior. For a start, very few companies, I think, actually painted the inside of their wagons. The outside was painted, the inside was left bare. Um, and so you're going to, in, in there, you're going to start off with bare timber, which is then going to be exposed to the effect of weathering from the, from the, the climate, but in addition from the goods that it carries. If you put coal in, it's going to leave a bit of a residue. If you put ballast in, uh, if you put, um, let's say you put packing cases in, they're going to be slid across the surface of the, of, of the wagon. They're all going to leave weathering effects in various forms. The other thing that occurs maybe is that in terms of the outside, maybe the sides and the end are going to be a bit different as well. Yeah, I think so, because let's say, I don't think we'd see this so much on narrow gauge, but certainly on the standard gauge trains that are travelling along at 40, 50 miles an hour, you're going to get quite a lot of spray. If we're looking at narrow gauge prototypes, these are probably travelling about 12, 15, 20 miles an hour, so I don't think you'd see it so much, but you would get some of it, wouldn't you? And I think some of the effects you see at the end of the wagon, you get two lines thrown up by the wheels of the, of, of the wagon in front, and that would be something that you could show on the wagon. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Each part of the wagon is going to is going to be affected in different ways. You know, the more we talk about this, the more I can see there is in it. It it, it just goes beyond what immediately meets the eye. Yeah, it, it does. Um, but you've got to start somewhere, and I think because of time constraints and that, if I talk you through a few basic techniques, we have to accept this is more an art than a science. And you can develop these. Um, these are ones that I've, I've sort of built up from reading and that, and ones I've tried out. And you'll do the same thing. Go on, inspire me. <laughs> right, I'll do my best. What I'm going to do initially, I've got, a, I've got a wagon here which has just got my basic Humber on number 70 livery. So what I, what I do to start out with, I, I make the wagon as it would be in virtually as new condition. And can I do, this is a wooden this kit, is a wooden isn't it? One, yeah. yeah. This I think is a DJB wagon, which I bought second hand and I've just had in a cupboard for a while. So I thought it would, I could use it to demonstrate the technique. And what we're going to try and do, if I can, what I've done on the other side is, that's the effect we're looking at. That's, I think we could class that as light weathering. Certainly a difference. Yeah, um, and you can do this very easily. This is, not a t this is not at all difficult. And even if you didn't want to go any further, you could achieve this without any trouble at all within a few minutes. The problem I've got with this wagon um, is that the base colour you can see here, which I've left, is a very dark red, very strong. I think this probably is car primer. I don't know what you think, but... This is perhaps one of these things, isn't it, where people go with what they think a wagon is going to look like, and perhaps the colours are too strong. Yeah, um, what you'll find... This, although this is my base Humbrol 70, is it's going to it's going to change colour as we as we um, as we work on it. So I've got here a jar. Um, all I've got within this is nothing uh, nothing complicated. I've taken one of the dark grey colours and I've um, I've added to it some Humbrol thinner. And some people, in fact, just use the the um, the thinners that they use to clean the brushes in if it's a dark colour. Uh, and this is quite simple. What we're going to do using the square ended five millimeter thickness brush. Um, and this is where the, the kitchen roll comes in, is get a fair amount on there, and we're going to wash, we're going to do what we call a wash in this wagon. We're going to take the brush. Now, I'm, I'm doing it vertically, because if you think about it, rain is going to run from the top of the wagon down towards the bottom. And this, in effect, is producing what would happen when soot from the locomotive exhaust or dust in the atmosphere was carried down by rain onto the wagon side. Now, it occurs to me that you're going to need to be patient and let your base coat dry, otherwise you're just going to presumably take that right off again with the thinners. Yeah, absolutely right. The other thing is, I don't leave the thinners just sitting on there. What I do, I mentioned kitchen roll, this is the first, dab it back off again. Because what, you, what very often will happen is you'll get the thinners building up on a base at the line at the bottom and you'll end up with a straight line across. So, yeah, for the, for the reason of melting the paint underneath and also for the effect, dab it back off. If you, if you find that your, your paint's too thick, you can actually scrub it off. It doesn't matter. Try and do it in a vertical fashion, and you'll still produce that effect of right. rainwork. Right. Okay, so what we've done there, um, I've not done it to any great degree. I tend to do that two or three times on this to get the effect. Um, once again, putting it on, dabbing it off. But over time, you'll end up with, with this. And it is a very, it's a very dilute colour that you're using there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is, very and that's um, if you put it on too thick, you're not going to get the the effect of the the rundown on it. But what we've got there, we've got a wagon that's um, it's, a, it's a little bit of service there. You've got you've got a bit of basic dirt. Uh, you've not got any chips. You've not got any 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 heavy build up of um, of weathering. That's okay, I think, for the bodywork. I think for the frames and the under underside, we put a bit more on 
um, right. because that's going to get spray. So once again, you, 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 if you're going to just do dye brushing, I think you put some quite heavy layers still on, on the on the frame there. Same colour. Yeah, basic. Yep. But this time, really splash it on. Right. And you might, if you wanted to, add a bit more on the bottom. Because if you think about it, the bottom of the wagon, you're going to get, you're going to get the, the, the dirt washing down. Mm -hmm. And you're also going to get splashes from below. So I think the lower part of the wagon will tend to get the worst of the wear uh, for that point of view. And if you just wanted a basically weathered wagon, that's all you need to do. I think what you'd do is you'd go over, you'd make certain it's got a fairly even spread. But there is a basically weathered wagon. Do you go so far as to pick different panels out differently? For instance, so occasionally you get things like a, a replaced plank or two, that kind of thing. Is that possible? Yeah, of course it is. And I think what would happen, um, if you replace the plank, you might just end up with bare wood. Now, that right. would probably be a little bit difficult to replicate. But let's say that they then painted it back in the original colour. What you might do then is go back to your original, in this case, Humbrol 70, and paint a new panel right. in. Okay. You'd have the effect then of a new panel, of a new, of a new sorry, a new, a new plank. Um, but yeah, that, that's your basic weathered wagon. And um, the running gear goes in, you would do that in exactly the same way, just a different colour? I think running gear, this, this has got, as you can see, I'm sort of changing the gear over. But I think running gear, you'd have to go for more for a rust effect, wouldn't you? If you think right. about it, you're going to get rust off the rail. So here right. I've got fairly dark grey. I've, I've, I've not gone for black. You might have said that these originally would have been painted mm -hmm, black. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I tend to steer away from blacks because they're very difficult colours to, to weather correctly. I've gone for a dark grey on there. What I might do then is, is, is do a wash of, say, a rusty coloured paint. And that would then give you the effect of, of water splashing onto it. As I say, I've only done a basic here. What I would tend to do is, um, I think if you wanted to do further, you're going beyond the washing. I mean, the next step, which I'll show, I, I call this sort of stage one weathering. It's only very, very basic. We could say it's a wagon that's only briefly been out of the works. It's showing a little bit of wear and tear from, from, from the effects of um, the atmosphere. If we take it to the next stage, then we'll go for what we call dry brushing. I'll just move that, that wagon over here. Now, what I've got, I've got another one which I got here. Now, what I've done is I've given it the basic 70. Um, it's another second-hand wagon. Um, what I have done, it's got a white roof, and I would normally, as you'll see from my other wagons, dirty this down, grey it down. But I thought I'd leave the white on for now because I can show the dry brushing technique. And it's the dry brushing, really, which is the key to this. Um, what we do, I'm going to take a, an ordinary tin of Humbrol. Um, this is a fairly dark colour. Um, make sure it's well mixed. Uh, kitchen roll again. Now, same brush in this instance. Um, and the other thing I need is another sheet of kitchen roll. Um, I mentioned we use a lot of this because what I'm going to do here, a bit of paint on the brush, but then I'm going to keep, see, see it's coming off. Yes. Now you see there, the, in effect, the, the paint, well, the brush is virtually dry. It's hardly any, you can't see any paint right. on there. Okay. But if you then go onto the wagon and you lightly brush it, in fact, that's come out quite heavy. Um, if we dry it down even more, you see, there's paint yes. coming on. Right. And that's the basic of dry brushing. It is just putting very little layer of paint on, and once again... And it's also pulling the texture out quite nicely, isn't it? Yeah. Um, kitchen roll, brush as much as it off as you can until your brush is as dry or virtually dry. This is hardly any paint on there. I'll come back to this, is mistreating the brush. And then on here, once again, it's, it's a bit heavy, so we'll just get a bit of kitchen roll, polish it off again. And you can, you can rub as hard as you like to you, you achieve the effect that you want. That's showing it very heavily on white, on brown, on the red, it won't show as much, but you put a bit on there. If anything, I've put a bit more on than I normally would, so you can see it. I mean, a dry brush, you really could, as I say, mistreat the brush, grind most of it away, and then rub it down. And it strikes me you can actually get not only background effects there, but presumably some sort of specific staining or marking and these kind of things as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, you for example, we come back to different parts of, the, of this van. You might, you, you might go for a fairly light dry brush at the top. You right. might go a bit heavier at the bottom yes, because yes, it's yes. getting splashed from the track mm. below. But that's the basic technique. Now what we then do, if I go back to the other wagon, is um, we layer it. Right. That, that has got just the one coat of paint on. I'll go back on the side of here. That's just one colour of dry brush. Right. On the inside, I've gone for the layering effect. Yes, I can see. Now the inside, 
because it's, it started out as bare wood, it's very difficult. I find the inside of wagons much more difficult than the outside, but the, the technique is totally the same. And at this end, here I've done a base um, coat of grey, trying to sort of give the bare wood effect. And then I've started dry brushing. And as I go along the wagon, I've, I've gone for different shades. I've started off with, with here a slight, a dark shade. I've then gone to a lighter grey, dry brush sat on. I've then gone to a brown. And as we come along, you see the depth. Yes, indeed, yes. And it, it, it's very much a case of um, the sort of more diff uh, uh, different shades you get in there, the more realistic I think it gets. Because what you're going to do towards the end, once, you, once you've got a fair number of layers, a little bit of this, mm -hmm. this sandpaper, and rub. Now what's going to happen there is you're going to introduce a graining effect. That's why don't go mm -hmm. front to back. Mm -hmm. go, go in the direction of the planking, unless your planking's front to back, but most planking's cross. And what you're also going to do is you're going to take off some of the upper layer, of your, your top um, dry brushing level, of the top, top dry brushing coat. You're going to reveal some of the ones right. below. Yes. You're going to get mixing and you get an effect there that um, it's, it's graining, it's wood that's being stained by different, different materials. Well, I think that weathering has to be about the most convincing I've seen. You know, the difference between those original commercial wagons that we started with and then going through these stages until we end up with something, you know, as sort of subtle as that really is convincing. And putting that outside, I think it, it, it does have this desired effect of blending in with the nature, the natural weathering of outside. And it really does look like the real thing has just been in, out there and in use on the railway for weeks and months. So yeah. thank you very much for showing me those techniques. I think it, you know, it really gives me lots to think about. I've got to go away and do this, I think, for the, the Lower Brindale Railway. So far, I've really chickened out of doing this one, but I think you've pers persuaded me that this is the way to go. I think the thing to do is, is start off in a fairly simple fashion, go for the light weathering, and then build up on that. And I think you'll, you'll find your own sort of adaptations of that. Um, but go, keep going back to your photographs, try and, try and sort of mimic what's going on there, and build up your own techniques. Thanks very much.